Okay. okay. So the other aspect of it is AI. Yeah, that's All another right. important okay. thing. So I, I don't know if I'm correct, but the impression that I got is that there is now um, a provision in the contracts that say that once, um, it says that once you're in the film, mm -hmm. they can scan, you attend it for like, you shoot for one day. Mm -hmm. They can scan your face mm -hmm. and then they can put that face on any in somebody, perpetuity in perpetuity yeah. anywhere in the universe my audience doesn't yeah. doesn't want to believe that that's the exact terminology in the contracts in perpetuity anywhere in the universe yeah okay so um so that's another thing that they are am i correct that's another thing i that, don't know the exact language but mm -hmm. that's one of the things that they're saying basically if we have vince and he's going to be a waiter back here they're gonna like you know what we're going to be able to use him we're shooting another film we don't need to pay him anymore. We already bought him mm -hmm. forever. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to use him in the next 20 films that we have. Yeah, that they're going to show in Neptune or something. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay. <laughs> exactly. All right. So, question. Yeah. Um, do you think there is a way that you can stop that? The union and all the actors can stop studios yeah, come up with a contract and be like, look, you can only use my image for this particular film. That's it. That's it. Okay. And just be and just and just and just do that. OK, what don't you think if I'm the studio, I can just I'll just AI generate all my characters. Yeah, you, you, that's what we're fighting for. That That's what they they believe. Now, I don't know about all their characters. Right. But, you know, he, Here's a personal feeling that I have. And it has, I don't know if I have massaged it all the way out, but here's the thing. I'm all down with capitalism, but when capitalism gets to the point when it's putting people out of work and people don't have a purpose anymore, eventually that's going to erode on society. So if I'm a fat cat and I'm sitting at the top and I have my $200 billion, but I put 6,000 people out of work, eventually that's going to come back and haunt me. Now, if I got that kind of money, I might be thinking, who cares? I'm going to go live on an island and I can, I can have my own world or whatever the case is. But at what expense? You got 6,000 people or 60,000 people or 600,000 people whose lives have no purpose. And, and, and is that the world that you want to live in? Like this, I applaud UPS. Oh, because of the increase. Okay. I, the UPS is like, I, I, I don't know the details of it, but I do know that if now, if you're driving, I see these guys, I have water in my thing. Cause when these guys come and make a delivery, I give them ice cold water. Cause they're busting their ass day and night, blah, blah, blah. Stepping over, uh, uh, all kinds of stuff. You know what I mean? Uh, just to get here, the weather's bad gunshots, you know what I mean? Tents, all kinds of flamethrowers. They do whatever it takes to get here. Right. And when they do get here, they give you the package. What UPS has done, I think, what's the minimum? 20, yeah. $180,000. A month, uh, a year. A year, yeah, annual, yeah. right? And then for me, that's a company that's conscious on the well-being of, it, it, there's just a certain consciousness that's expanded that goes beyond greed. Mm -hmm. If I got the money and if I can end up helping this guy, I mean, realistically, think, think about that. If you're a service person and you're making $180,000, like how good will you feel? And what can you do for your children? And the, the improvement of the education system, I mean, I don't know about the education system, but like what opportunities are now available to you to improve your life, your family's life, your loved one's life? Like, that's such a great feeling. I want to live in a world where people feel great about what they do and they're being justly compensated for it. And I think that there's enough going around. But that's my own personal philosophy. Not everybody feels that way, obviously. Otherwise, we wouldn't have this conversation. conversation yeah. And if somebody asks me, hey, look, I'm writing your content. Without me, you don't exist. I'm directing or I am acting in your content. And without me, you can't exist. 
can I have 2% of your half a billion dollars? For me, I'm saying yes, but I have, I'm cut from a different cloth, uh, whatever, the, what, whatever the case is, you know? And again, I don't know the details of all of this stuff, so I don't want to be talking sideways, but I'm just saying from the little bit of information I have, off of that information, that's, that's kind of like where my, where my position would be. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you think studios are eventually going to resort to shooting outside of the U.S.? I, 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 don't, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I really, I really don't know what's going to happen. I do know that, that there's people that want to shoot here in the U.S. and they want to make things happen. So there's producers and there's projects right now that are saying, look, what, SAG, what, what, do you, what do you want us to do? And they're saying, well, these are the terms that we want everybody to abide by. If you abide by these terms, we can shoot this project. And from what I understand, that's how things are going to be, uh, be done. If anything is shooting right now, as far as streaming services then, or, or, or film, that's, what, that's, that's the agreement, I think, that has to, that's happening. Okay. All right. Um, just a little bit about how, the sh the, um, how a show or a movie actually gets done, right? So you were talking about shooting a, a pilot. Yes. All right. So when you shoot a pilot, it is not guaranteed that you will be in the final cast. That I will be? Yeah. Mine is. Because I negotiated up front okay. that if this pilot gets picked up, that I'll be at least in the first season. Oh, uh, okay. Yes. So you can negotiate that. I did. Okay. I negotiated. They came to me and said, if we get picked up, we want you to be part of the original cast. That okay. was part of the thing that I was doing there. And in my particular thing at least one episode will be focused on my character. Okay. Right. But there are instances when it didn't work out that way, right? For other actors, they were in the pilot. And many, many, okay. many happen like that. Um, they, they come in and they, whoever was there, they wipe them all out and they come in with a whole new crew and yeah. that's what they do. But I secured myself and this was a very generous production. They had a great director, a great writer, um, um, great producers that were attached to it, it very homegrown in that way. Mm -hmm. And um, they were like, look, we're going to make this happen. Everybody comes with us. Okay. Everybody's riding on the coattails of this situation. That's the kind of environment that I want to be in. And I, I you know, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when you shoot a pilot, mm -hmm. do you get a certain guarantee in terms of paying your contract that I want to be paid? So for it, first, how do you get paid in a pilot when you shoot it? Do you get paid per hour, per day of shoot, or do you get offered a certain amount for the? So it depends. If you're going to be the principal, like if you're, let's say, take um, How to Get Away with Murder. Viola Davis, mm -hmm. she's the headliner. Yes. Right. So she's Sweet. she she's Viola. <laughs> Love that. So show. I don't know what kind of money she gets, but I'm <laughs> sure she gets a little bit more than the rest of people. Right. 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 So because she's Viola, she's she's driving the show. And then those five or six people underneath it, those are your series regulars. So those guys are guaranteed to be in it. Now, depending on the production and depending on your agent and whatever happens, usually they're going to say something like, these five people are going to be in every episode, 13 episodes, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. Sometimes they do a thing called favored nations, which means like, let's say, for example, the production doesn't have a lot of money, but they got enough and they got picked up. So what they're going to do is go to those five people and say, hey, look, everybody here is going to get 200 grand for the first 13 episodes. Okay. We're not going to pay you no crazy money. No one's walking away with a million dollars a week or whatever. That's Seinfeld. Seinfeld, those guys broke that barrier. Seinfeld and I think Friends, right around that time, they did some crazy negotiations. They were making a million dollars a week. Yeah. Right. So this is that's kind of great and funny money and still a lot of money to this day because of their residual structure. Right. But let's just say how to get away with murder. We need to put a lot of money in Viola. She's getting her X, Y, Z dollars, but we can only afford to pay the rest of you guys 200 grand for 13 episodes or thereabout. Now, if you're a working actor, or if you're trying to get into business or whatever, and somebody said, here's 200 grand to do what you love. And to be part of a great TV show and to work with Viola Davis, <laughs> you're gonna take. You, you're not even. Gonna, <laughs> yeah. You're not gonna look back. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Right. You're not gonna look back. And guess what? The valet is gonna get a two percent tip 
offer you two hundred thousand. <laughs> right? You're going to gladly give the valet or whoever else two percent of that. You gladly do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then you know you got the rest of your life is it, is set up. So if it's favored nations, they're going to pay everyone equal. But they might have some other people. Let's say the third person in that series did two series before. So then that person has a little bit more marquee value or whatever mm -hmm. the case is. So they might structure a higher pay struck a, a pay or pay okay. deal or whatever. So but for the when you shoot the pilot, you mm -hmm. just get paid for the shooting days yes. of the pilot. Yes, okay. yes, unless you have a wonderful agent and they work out some other kind of deal. Okay. But typically it's, and for, for me, for example, I got paid, I got paid for travel and all that, you know, all that, all that stuff like that. And then how many days I end up shooting. So that's how that works. And then per day, it's eight hours. If you go over, that's a bump. Yes. Okay. Yes, I think the two hours, you could do eight hours. And then if you go two hours over, they might give you a half hour for lunch. Then you get a uh, time and a half. And then after the fourth hour, you get double time. And then if you're there for over those four hours, I think you go into a thing called golden time. And that's kind of sweet because if you're in golden time, which I think is your 16th hour, I'm not sure, it's on the, it's on the schedule, but then you get paid your day rate. So if the day is the SAG day rate is a, 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 a thousand six or 1100 bucks, then you're making $1,100 an hour, but you're there for 16 hours. So you're happy, you like you get you get like all of a sudden you got some new energy, right? Right. But to get to those 16 hours and believe me, they're oftentimes working you pretty hard. So um, it's 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 hard work, um, you know, and there's that. Now, some people will be like, oh, man, that's why some people hear those figures. And they're thinking uh, after getting paid a thousand dollars an hour, what are you crying about? Right. Well, here's the reality. I'm going to give you some figures, at least when I was coming up. That might be the only job you do that year. Everything else is going to be auditioning and you're going to be waiting tables. And, you know, so they said when I, uh, at least 15 or 20 years ago, they say that the average SAG actor books about one out of every 32 auditions. Jesus. It's still true now for I, you? I don't know what the current things are, but when there was 20 years ago, 15 years ago, figures came at me that... Um, at least for commercials, you're going to book one out of every 32 or so. so that, that means that if you have a halfway decent agent and you get 30 auditions in a year, you might book one. And I think the SAG average at the time was a SAG actor books at least one national commercial every two years. So even if you do make 30, 60 or 80,000 on a commercial, you've done, done one job. In two years. So some people might be sitting off in the world or whatever the case is, and it's like, you know what? I have no sympathy for actors because they get paid so much money. Well, those people that get paid so much money, the top five percenters, the Jamie Foxx, the, the um, Tom Cruise, um, the... Uh, Jen Mar Aniston. Mm -hmm. um, Margot. Is it Margot or Margot Ro Robbie? Yeah. Mar Margot, Margot Ro Ro Robbie. 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 I'm not sure. Anyhow, she's hella talented. Um, but those guys are carrying a lot of the SAG of, of money, you know, to make things happen. But it, there's that. That's the 5%. Then you got your character actors that you like. I know that guy. I've seen him in this. He's on there. I just watched this thing um, last night called Loot. And there was like three characters on there that I don't know the names of. But they were also You've on other, yeah. other shows. So, like those. so then let's say you got 15% of those actors. I saw, I know, I don't know their name. But I saw them here or there, whatever, right? Then you got like another maybe 5% of people like me. I come in and I hit blah, 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 but I disappear. I'm not a household name. You don't know who the hell I am. Really not. But I've been fortunate enough to, be, to make a living and pay for um, my kids to do whatever they needed to do. Was not an extravagant lifestyle, but um, I also wasn't hurting. But I also supplemented my income by doing everything else. So that's really what every single other actor is doing. So the other 85% of the actors are supplementing their income just to get by. That means Starbucks, their restaurants, you know, their teachers. They're doing all kinds of stuff just to, just to get by. And if they're lucky enough to get that series regular audition and to pop. So I'm going to tell you this right now. When, I'm going to put it that way. I'm okay. saying, I'm going to put it on tape. 
when this series, Buffalo Days, gets picked up, it's a good, it's a great Western. It's wonderful, and I love the character that I play, Joseph Blackburn Bass. When this gets picked up, I can probably take my foot off the gas, um, but I've been in this business. I've been here in California since 1993, and I've been hustling since. So that's what they say. It takes 20 years to become an overnight sensation. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. right? So, so when people are be like, oh, yeah, he, he made his break, whatever. I've been, I've been chopping wood for a long time. And so it's not an overnight sensation, contrary to people's belief. You just can roll up in here, and the next thing you know, you're Miley Cyrus or whatever the case is. <laughs> I, I, it's, it's just not. That's some, there might be a few people that have that has happened to, but for the rest of us, that's some bullshit. That's some bullshit. It takes hard, hard, hard work to do this. Okay. So how do you know where to audition? Where, where to audition? Yeah. Is it the agent? Is it, do you hustle on your own? How do you know where to audition? Well, there's a couple of websites that favor uh, opportunities for um, actors that you can go to, like Actors Access and blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. You can do a lot of that stuff independently without an agent. That's a hustle in and of itself. But typically, you need to have an agent. Okay. To get into auditions. Okay. Yeah. Now, but then finding an agent is also a hustle in itself. <laughs> right. It's like a weird, this whole business is like a catch-22. Right. You know what I mean? You can't get the job unless you get an agent. You can't get an agent unless you have a job. <laughs> I know. It's like, like yeah. being a member of a SAG, right? Like being yeah. a member of SAG, you can't get into SAG unless you've done a SAG film. You can't do a SAG <laughs> film unless you're in SAG. It's like... It's, and then also being in SAG actually has a fee. You pay an annual fee, right? It's not free to no, be there. No, it's not, it's not free. And it's not free to get in. Right. right. Um, I think now it might be like three grand. What is it? What is it to get in now? Five. Oh. Yeah. Annual? No, no. Just to, just to, just to, just to, get just in. to. But you do pay dues. Yeah, you have to pay dues. And so um, the dues are, I think, two and a half percent of whatever you make for that year. So if, um, and there is a cap. I think there's a quarter of a million, $250,000 cap. So if I am a Tom Cruise or a Jamie Foxx making that kind of money, um, I, I pay fag, SAG $250,000. And then that's it. For so the year. Pay, yeah. For, for the, the year. year. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Because that's my SAG dues. Yeah. But let's say if I made a hundred grand off a commercial, 2.5% of that is going to go to SAG. Okay. Right. So if you want to want to break it down, you guys want to kind of get into it a little bit. Let's just say you end up getting the job and you get 60 grand for that job. Well, you got to have most people have an agent. Right. So your agent's getting 10 percent. Right. <laughs> sometimes. Yeah, yeah. The 10 percenters. And then sometimes you have to have a, a, um, a manager that's 10 to 15 percent. So that's potentially 25 percent. Then oh, Uncle Sam has his greedy hands out. Or <laughs> let me just be um, uh, let me just be gender uh, fair. Uh, they have their greedy hands out, <laughs> right? So then that's another 33% or 30% or so. So just off of the top, your 60 grand is now chopped down to about 30, 30 grand. Yeah. Right. Then you got to pay off all your friends that have been like floating <laughs> you, right? Dude, you've been on my couch for three months now. You haven't paid a damn penny. So you're going to break them off and do all this stuff. By the time you're done with everything, you might have enough money to buy the movie ticket of the film that you're in, <laughs> right? I can afford my own film to go see myself yeah. in the theater. God forbid there's a, a premiere. Right. You need to, you need to buy <laughs> right. the suit. You got to buy the suit. You got to get a credit card. Get the suit. But I brought something here fairly today. I don't know how you want to cut this up if you want to at all, but I have actually bought some SAG checks. Oh. Yeah. So these are when you do end up getting paid and um, it goes into residuals. Right. These are not streaming service residuals. These are network network residuals, which okay. is the pay structure is different. And we wish that uh, they come up with something like this for maybe you're talking about that systems broken. Right, right. I don't think that SAG is really arguing with network pay system. I think that's pretty solid. It's just the streaming service and the AI, I think. And the AI. And the AI. Thing. Those are the two big things. Yeah. But it's yeah. Yeah. So let's open that. You want to but, open? This? Yeah. Let's, but let me on. just say one thing. Yeah. Um, I was talking with an. Uh, somebody who does AI, he's into technology. Yes. He's not into the the entertainment business, but he's just into technology. Yes. And I just wanted to get his take on where AI is going. Mm -hmm. um, I think because we're both writers yes. and that is one of the 
major contentions like are you just going to hand over a script a story to ai and yeah. just you know let them do it yeah um and his take because he's so removed from entertainment mm -hmm. i thought i can get a very objective view from a businessman because it's, that's what he is right and his view is this he said look i have no interest in the entertainment business mm -hmm. i don't have any friends or family that's in the entertainment business i do technology right and that's what i love doing and he said, in 10 years, mm -hmm. we will create actors on screen mm -hmm. using purely AI. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's his take. So he said, you can take it anywhere you want. You can do whatever you want with it. But I'm guaranteeing in 10 years, we'll get to that point. Mm -hmm. So now it's not anymore about whether or not you can stop it from happening. It's about when. how do you mm. work around it mm. so that even when that happens, you still have enough protection for actors. Now, his take on um, writers is different because he feels like uh, AI learns, right? Mm -hmm. That's what they, they, you still need to feed it information. Mm -hmm. um, so he thinks that what's going to happen is that AI is going to take care of the small scenes. Mm -hmm. Like if it's a casual, hey, dude, what's happening? Bye, you know. Mm -hmm. they, AI can take care of that. So that's one. Mm -hmm. Humans will come in for the more complicated things. Mm -hmm. Second is that AI is going to ch challenge writers so you'll filter the average mm -hmm. from the excellent. Mm -hmm. And the excellent will be the ones that will re retain their jobs. Right. So, but he's also saying that you got to uh, gotta understand mm -hmm. that about 50 years ago, when this guy said, I have uh, radio, I think, or radio, yeah. I, have, I have invented a radio. Uh -huh. Everyone discounted him and said, you're useless, you're stupid, you're an idiot, we don't need it. Mm -hmm. Throw that in the trash. Yes. Fast forward 50 years after. Exactly. And then yeah. there's that. So there's that. He, in his mind, he said that if there's anything we should learn by now is that Technology mm -hmm. is inevitable. No way around it. Yeah, there's no way around it. So he said, I don't know. I don't know what their concerns are. I don't know what they're fighting for. Mm -hmm. But your question is where AI is going, and that's where it is going. So I guess hmm. I feel I actually told him, why don't you offer your services <laughs> to SAG? <laughs> Advise them on what to do. Yeah. And then take a cut or something. I don't know, get paid. But I think that is because uh, I'm not an actor, obviously. So I also don't know how, yeah. how to navigate it. And so I guess that's where the sympathy and the worry yeah. is coming from. It's like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Like you need some hardcore tech people to be very, very blunt with you. Right. And then you need lawyers and then you need hum humanity in right. the and middle yeah. of all of it. Humanity, it. I think as you were explaining the whole thing, it made me think about, um, you ever see that, drum, that um, bumper sticker that says, Drum machines have no soul. Right, right. So lots of music was made off of drum machines. Yes. Right? So yes. there's that. It had its purpose. It did its, did its thing and whatnot, right? But there's something in us that yearns inside for a still a live drummer. Right. True. You, you, you know what I mean? True, true. And so I think what's going to happen is you're going to have people who enjoy the 808. You're going to have people who enjoy the little, uh, the, the, I don't know, the, this, it's not, I don't know what it's called. It's like the Simmon or something. Oh, like yeah. The, um, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the square thing that you, yes. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? People are going to get down with that. But I think eventually the soul is going to be starving for the human connection. Yeah. And so, so there's that. And I think you're right. Technology is inevitable. It's going to happen regardless one way or another. Yeah. And maybe technology might get to the point where it can end up writing as prolific as, let's say, a playwright like August Wilson. If that happens, you know, there's that. But eventually, I think what happen, what's going to happen is even if we put people up on the screen or whatever the case is, what are you going to do during the talk show? Or what are you going to do when there's the red carpet? You're going to have, you know, AI 13 go up there and do the whole thing like that? Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe people will start to be fascinated by actual robots and begin to worship robots. Who knows? Who knows? Um, or there's something different about, and maybe they will get to, we will get to a place where a robot can actually pick up, go through the red carpet, 
take a adoring fan's notepad and then take the pen and write and then look right into the here you go right right and maybe that would be like a great thrill to someone someday that may happen in fact it probably will happen and then you're going to have still a part of society is going to be like i really want to look at a person's eyes yeah and i want to feel another human being sign my sign their autograph and hand me that right so I think that we're always going to have a nice split, or I, I don't know about nice split, but I think we're always going to have fo folks who fall on the side of technology and rave about it, and those who are not. We had that conversation in my class today about Chat D GTP or Chat something. Chat GPT. Like that. Yeah, and then some of the some of the students were like, uh, "I'm a little scared. It's a little dangerous." Blah blah blah. And many students were like, "Oh, I love it. I have very very little homework to do because I can just." <laughs> Put that stuff in there. Put that stuff in there. And then last semester, one of the one of my students gave a speech about Chat GTP, and they ended up taking the content of my class, putting it into it, and it came back, and then it wrote it out, and it sounded like seventy five percent of my lecture. It was based, and everybody in class was like, "Oh my God," because mm -hmm. it sounded just like. And I don't know what kind of prompts they put in there or whatever the case is, but it sounded very, very, very similar to, to my lecture. I tried it last week. I was struggling with a sentence and I gave the sentence to chat GPT and I asked it to rewrite it 10 different ways. And did it? Prolific writer. Did not use any of it. Because <laughs> you were you scared? You felt like no, you made... no. It inspired me to think. Okay. It was like, oh yeah, I can say that in a different way. Ah. So I think when he said, when the when that tech guy said that, it's going to challenge writers yeah. Yeah. so that only the excellent will remain. I think he is correct. Because when I realized, oh yeah, you know, I could, this is something that I can do. This is something I probably shouldn't do. So maybe there's, a, but then he is correct that the short term use, because it's already happening, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that's going to advance and advance and advance. But I do think there is a solution, mm -hmm. and it may already be in our cusp. I know that the, um, the producer of BTS, the Korean boy band, mm -hmm. that's what he's trying to do, to refocus the, the support from the product mm -hmm. to the artist. What do you mean by that? 